<laughs> it worked. Oh. <laughs> now that I have you on, I'm gonna start my spiel. Okay. Um, so this is a re-recording of something that we tried to do a couple of weeks ago and had tech issues. Yes. Um, so we're we're retrying this. So um, if you do not know who I am, I'm Dawn Brown. I own Degrees North Images. I am an elopement, wedding, and vacation photographer for playful, adventurous couples and families. Uh, I am based near Houston, Texas, and available for travel pretty much worldwide. Uh, and I have Katie with me. Hi! Uh, longtime friend. <laughs> um, we've known each other like almost two decades. It's yeah. pretty crazy. Um, and she is a travel planner with her company, which is Pictures and Postcards Travel. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be talking about how to plan in a bachelorette party at Walt Disney World. Uh, the prevalence of traveling bachelorette parties has grown significantly in the last, I don't know, five or six years. Yep. Uh, lots of people heading to Nashville, <clears throat> New York City, Las Vegas, but that might not necessarily be for everyone. So we are going to talk about if you want to take your ladies to Walt Disney World. But before I get into all of that, Katie, why don't you tell everyone about yourself? Um, so I'm Katie Fisher. I am the owner of Pictures and Postcards Travel. Um, I am an independent contractor based out of Buffalo, New York, but I can help anybody anywhere. It doesn't matter what state you live in. Um, my specialty is all things Disney, but I can help you plan any kind of trip anywhere you want to go. Um, but Disney is uh, kind of near and dear to my heart. So I've I love selling Katie Disney and trips. I are what <laughs> you would call park junkies. Yeah, uh, just a and little. that's actually where we met. <laughs> we actually met when we were on the Disney College program, uh, working at what was then, dating ourselves, right. Disney's MGM Studios, now Disney's Hollywood Studios. So mm -hmm. uh, that's where we met. I, I sold turkey legs. She sold ice cream. It was a match made in yep. heaven. And here we are. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> oh, um, yes. Many so adventures. <laughs> we're actually going to be talking about this from the angle of if you're planning a, tri a Disney trip specifically to Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida, but we may mm -hmm. at times mention Disneyland in California, which is also a good option. Um, and maybe we'll do another live on that at some other point. But today, mostly yeah. we're talking about Walt Disney World. So I'm going to jump right yeah. in. Um, yeah and ask the the first question how early should you start planning uh so you want to plan it as early as possible you can book up to 499 days in advance uh if you know you're getting married that soon in advance want to plan your bachelorette party but at there least 180 days yeah. <laughs> two years out, two years yeah. out. um the the best i can say is 180 days you want to give yourself at least that six month window and there's going to be some reasons that we'll get into later for that but um your whatever you agree upon price wise you're not losing out on anything you're not paying more you're not paying less you're basically securing yourself a room by booking that six month window out so i would yes and like like she said you can book within that time i i when we just went in Jan well, it was January last year. Oh, my God, I can't believe it's been that long already. But we booked within four months. <laughs> yes. Uh, but we did, we did miss out on some things because we yeah. booked in a shorter amount of time. So Yeah, um, and it is doable, but it's, you, like you said, you do miss out on a couple of things by waiting till the last minute. So. And you um, had mentioned that there's a, a spread for the payments, right? Like, you don't yes. have to pay everything right up front when you no. book. No, no. Uh, the only time you have to pay up front when you book is if you book less than 30 days in advance. Um, but if you book 180 days in advance, a year in advance, you just are responsible for a $200, day, a $200 deposit. And then after that, okay. it's uh, just however often you want to make payments. So 30 days before your trip is when everything is due. So you have a time to pay everything. And I should mention that Katie's services are free. Yes, thank you. Sorry. So, yes, um, they are. <laughs> if you want to have if you want to have everything planned from like getting help picking which hotel to stay at to 
picking which dining reservations you want and mm-hmm. like I mean literally like an I, itinerary down to the minute everything it's free <laughs> and she'll do it for you yeah <laughs> all, all you have to do is show up at the airport on time or if you're going Pretty to much. drive get in your vehicle when you plan to and everything else is set for you so I even plan your bathroom breaks so just don't you know go past <laughs> that <laughs> okay so Once you decide how early, like once you have got the ball rolling, um, the next thing to kind of decide is like, when should you go? Um, And I think that really, I mean, for a family trip, this is, this kind of is across the board. Depends on what kind of trip you want, when you should go. Uh, You know, do you want to be party time? Are you want something relaxing? Are you all about park hopping and like doing all the rides and seeing all the princesses and doing all of that stuff? Do you want a mix of both? Um, This is one of those things where you have to kind of sit down and look at what is going on in the park at that time. And this is one of the things that actually Katie can help you with determining when when is the best time to go for your party. Yes. Yeah. There's, and if you don't want the heat, don't go in the summer. <laughs> yeah. So for me, if somebody asks me, like, when, when should I go? Um, I like to go between January and April mm-hmm. or then not again until like October. Right. Um, or very early November because I, I and I live in Texas. <laughs> so like, I should know better, but <laughs> I hate the heat. I the summer heat at Disney is just, it's oppressive. And it's I fantastic. Cannot. But Katie is the exact opposite. I am. She wants to go all the months that I don't want to be there. Yes, I love going when it is super hot. I hate the cold, so I will take the 98 degrees at any point in time. But aside yeah. from that, I will go in the, the first couple weeks of January also are fairly nice, even though it's a little cold. Um, but January has its perks too. So, um, and also another beef that I have with specifically Walt Disney World in June, July, and August is the crowds. <laughs> like, not only yes. is it oppressively hot, it's insanely crowded. Uh, it is. And so, if you, if the summer, this is where we'll bring up Disneyland. If summer is the only option for you, Disneyland is amazing in mm-hmm. the summer. The temperatures are awesome yeah the crowds I think the longest I've only ever been to Disneyland in July the longest line I ever waited in was like 45 minutes yeah for it's the nice. same ride in Walt Disney World you will wait three hours <laughs> yes you will so, <laughs> that's something to consider and yeah. Katie again can help you decide if you should mm-hmm. pick Disney World or Disneyland yep um so Let's see. Yeah. And I want, also wanted to mention, most people think that Thanksgiving week is actually the busiest, but no. we are intimately familiar with the fact that that is not true. Nope. Fourth of July week is the most insane week. Yeah. And they, the parks will reach capacity at a much faster rate yes. than during Thanksgiving. Uh, so just keep that in yeah. mind if you're yeah. looking at a July trip. And capacity um, means no matter who you are, you don't get into the park. So Yeah, you, it doesn't matter <laughs> if you're staying at a Disney hotel or not. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to just get into briefly why I like, like why we choose certain times of year mm-hmm. that we like the best. So I like the cooler temperatures. Um, and even in April, it's in March, like right now here in Texas, it's 80 degrees. Like we can go swimming right now. So I know <laughs> you probably have to see the snow on the ground. <laughs> it's, it was, it was 60 for three days this week and then it snowed yesterday. So, you know, like I'm wearing a tank top today and I'm a little warm. So. <laughs> yeah, I got my long sleeves on. I'm sitting here uh, with a blanket <laughs> over me. So, <laughs> so if swimming and water parks are important to you because uh, Disney World does have two water parks. Mm-hmm. You could go in March and April, have comfortable temperatures yeah. for park hopping. Um, I also love the spring months because the Epcot Flower and Garden Festival is going beautiful. on. And it's beautiful. Yeah, like if that is. If you want some really special photo apps with all of your best mm-hmm. girlfriends, I mean... 
it's yeah. insane how it's really it nice. Yeah. Um, and then October, oh, just favorite. Halloween at Walt well, Disney World is like awesome. the best. So Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party is an mm-hmm. after park closes event Mm -hmm. it's an extra fee but it's worth every penny it is everybody gets dressed up in costumes Mm -hmm. um you get to go trick-or-treating you get to go trick-or-treating it's so much fun and also simultaneously at epcot epcot is having the food and wine festival Festival. which is like i mean when totally adulting just go to the food and wine festival and eat disney Mm -hmm. and just eat like just yes everything yeah special celebrations like that are kind of happening at all different throughout the year year. um yeah and there's so many of them um but for a a girl's trip i think flower and garden festival time and the halloween and food and wine time would be the most fun and um give you the most unique experience yeah it absolutely is um how about I, I know you also like the holiday time. I I like the I holiday do. time too, but you you like it for a girls trip. I do. I think it's really you nice. Like I like the, the <laughs> I do. I should just be there. Um you can see <laughs> the different <laughs> every hotel is set up a little bit differently so you can kind of park or resort hop and see the different um Christmas trees that they have set up there. They have different events going on at Epcot um, where they have guest speakers. Um, they have, I got to see John Stamos this year, which was kind of cool. Um, and uh, so it's, I don't know, it's just special. It's, it's. Who did you say? I Disney. saw when you I can't was go there. Wrong. Didn't we see Lance Bass, but uh, I don't even remember it. We I did. Mean, this was the early yes, 2000s, we saw guys. So it was a big yes. deal at the time. <laughs> it was. So. The movie On the Line just came out oh, where right. Lance Bass <laughs> and they were in Hollywood Studios and Lance Bass is like, I don't know, I like feel 20 like feet away from us. Talking. Like, that's Lance Bass. <laughs> uh, right. We're doing ourselves like too much. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> so those are some different things to keep in mind, like I said, when yeah. you're deciding when you want to go. Special celebrations, weather, um, crowd size Mm -hmm. those kinds of things will be important um and the prices are the prices fluctuating like they used to where they were higher during peak times and lower during off times yes and no so disney changed the way that they do their ticket pricing now so their date based tickets so it doesn't fluctuate a lot but it could be a difference of twenty dollars a day per ticket um room wise the price of the rooms pretty much stays the same. I mean, if you look at it as a whole, uh, what you're saving at the end of the day, it could be a couple hundred dollars, but it's not going to be, you know, a savings of thousands of dollars. Um, What they do have, though, is they do run specials at certain times of the year, but we don't know about those until, you know, a couple months before. But even if you are booked and you have your deposit down and you've agreed to pay a certain price and a special comes out, um, I can go on and get you the special pricing for your resort as long as it meets all the all the um me every and that it meets everything yeah and, yeah okay. and so you'll never pay more than what you agree upon with that deposit but you could always pay less if they have a special so that's important to okay. remember too Okay Yeah and like really any hotel the prices are usually a little bit higher per they night are. on the weekend yes. versus a weekday. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something to consider. Right. Um, if you're traveling, usually you're going to be ending up taking a few days off of work anyways. Right. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Yep. Um, so after you kind of decide when you should go, mm-hmm. where should you stay? We have differing opinions on this. <laughs> we do. <laughs> um, okay, so I do want to say you can rent an Airbnb, like, mm-hmm. and you might save money on your lodging, but the ticket, you still have to buy tickets, um, mm-hmm. and then you have to worry about transportation. Um, so you might have to rent a car or worry about Ubering back and forth, or, and if you do rent a car, you're going to have to pay for parking when you go to a park or yep. a resort for dinner. Yep. So 
the cost that you're saving by maybe renting an Airbnb, you might actually completely okay. eat your savings just in transportation. Yeah. So for this reason, we always recommend that you stay, stay on property at a Disney resort because it's just so much easier. Yeah, you can get a rental car, you can save on the parking at the hotels mm -hmm. and the parks, mm -hmm. uh, Disney's Magical Express. Yeah, you can get to um, and from the airport. And you can stay at the parks later and get into the parks earlier, where if you're not staying on property, you don't get that perk either. So, Yeah, yeah. there's a thing called extra magic hours, and each mm -hmm. day one of the park opens early only for Walt well, Disney World right. Resort guests. Right. Um, but the Magical Express is great. Do you want to tell them about that? Yeah, so Magical Express is Disney's free um, airport transportation to and from the airport. Uh, it gets set up when we book your trip. And um, when you get to the Orlando airport, you just make your way down to the Magical Express pickup. And they take you from the airport to your hotel. They will take care of your luggage. They pick all your luggage up for you and deliver it to your room um, a little bit later. And then the day that you have to leave, you get um, about three and a half hours prior to your flight. They take you back to the airport, and they also will take your luggage for you. So early that morning, the day you leave, you check your luggage in, and basically the only time you have to worry about your luggage is when you're in your hometown. So it's, uh, it's really convenient because it gets you – you don't have to worry about – going to the rental car place and picking up your rental car and figuring out how to get from the Orlando airport to Disney world. And it's just very convenient. Yeah. It's, so. it's, it's worth it because I mean, just an Uber from the airport could cost you $30. Um, yeah. And yeah. It, it, it's just kind of like once you check in for your flight, wherever you are located, you can just mm -hmm. brain dump. <laughs> you're done. Like, Pretty much, yeah. Just, the next yeah. thing you know, you're at Disney and you don't have to do any yep. work. Um, yeah. So Literally, all yeah, you have so, to do is show up at the airport on time. <laughs> yeah, it, it literally is a magical express. <laughs> um, it really is. <laughs> so as far as where to stay, uh, it really, it'll depend on your budget, but... And, mm -hmm. and also the time of year you're going, because if you're going in the summer, some things fill up faster than others. Um, yeah. But I, um, you know, there, there's a, there's, you, you could figure out if it's cheaper to rent two rooms or get a suite or a cabin. Um, mm -hmm. These are all things that Katie can tell you yep. when you try to book because she has all the current pricing. Yes. Um, but I think if I was going for a girl's trip, um, if I was going, um, in the spring, like, or the January, April time frame, I'd probably just, I would, I would stay in a value hotel. I know like you're diametrically opposed to the value hotels, but, um, I, I don't mind them at all. Mm -hmm. Um, but if I was going to it during the food and wine festival, I would absolutely stay in one of the higher tier hotels that's located Yes. right near Epcot so that I could walk to and from Walking. the park. Um, there, yeah. There's about five hotels around what's called Crescent mm -hmm. Lake that are in walking distance and have mm -hmm. a special entrance into Epcot. Uh, so that would be my yeah. choice during that time of year. Those are more money, um, but they do have like villas available Worth that it. sleep a larger number mm -hmm. of, of people. So I think it's worth it. Yes. But I know you hate value resorts and you just won't stay there ever. I don't, I don't hate them. And I mean, I have stayed in them. I just don't, when I go to Disney, I don't want, I don't know. It's they're That's where their value. So it's a, where a lot of groups stay. So there's a lot of unattended children that stay there. And I just, I don't know. I want to worry about my own kid and I don't want other kids ruining that. So I, mean, I know it's yeah. Disney and there's kids everywhere, but. It's, but if you're going with a group a of your girlfriends, that might not be the kind of, like, ambience you want. Right, yeah. Um, especially right, if right. you plan on spending, you know, relaxing time, time in the at your hotel. hotel. In the pool, yeah. Because uh, yeah. they all have different amenities. So, obviously, the value resorts will have less amenities than the yes, moderate they do. and the deluxe yeah. resorts. So, yeah. if you, like, have time, if you, you know, plan on setting a time setting aside time to 
hang out enjoy the pool. the pool, you know, have some drinks, eat at the restaurants at your hotel, right. you're going right. to get more at the more moderate and deluxe resort. Right. And I mean, um, remember, this is Disney, and this is there are going to be kids at every hotel. It's not that if you stay at a deluxe resort, there's not going to be kids, because there will be, but there's going to be less kids at the deluxe yeah. resorts. So yeah, yeah. So that's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I I we I had actually talked about this before. I've never stayed there, but Old Key West Resort has something that I think looks awesome, and if I was going on a girl's trip, I would probably try to book there first. But they have a two-bedroom villa that sleeps up to nine people. Nine people, people. yeah, yes. And, and it, when you break it down per person, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's as good as any, like, hotel that you would get off property. And it's a really nice, and it's yeah, it's a nice resort. The, the resort itself is really nice, mm -hmm. um, and it's close, you know, it's a short bus ride to downtown, um, to Disney Springs mm -hmm. and to Epcot and to um, Disney Hollywood Studios. Um, yeah, it's kind I mean, of in the middle. Yeah, it's kind of an awesome location. So, yeah. And when I when we had checked before, that was about six hundred and eighty dollars for night per night. But if you have eight people splitting, you divide that up, splitting that eight ways. Yeah. Or nine ways because it sleeps up to nine. Like mm -hmm. that's probably going to be more comfortable for you than trying to book a suite at one of the moderate or value yeah. resort because it's got like a kitchen yeah. I mean, and it's, it's like a whole condo I was just gonna say <laughs> that it has a kitchen it's got it's they're really nice rooms yeah so I mean every Disney resort has oh, god oh I was gonna say that was one of the things that you, you had uh discussed previously was that grocery delivery is like a thing yeah yes so if you get it's a, a hotel big thing that has a kitchenette or um you know like a microwave and a refrigerator it has all that yeah yeah so all the disney resorts have little mini like dorm room refrigerators but the two bedroom villas actually have full-size kitchenettes they have everything you could make breakfast, lunch, and dinner in there if you wanted to with a grocery delivery, get the things delivered to your room, and um, everything's kind of right there for you, which is really nice. So if you want that kind of atmosphere where you want to sit as a have mimosas in the morning and make some pancakes, definitely go for the two-bedroom villas. Because I know when you're, when you're planning a trip away, especially right before you're getting married, yeah. you're thinking a lot about money. Yes. <laughs> um, but it might actually, like, and the default is to, okay, well, we'll just book the value resort because it's cheaper. Right. But it might actually be less expensive to, to do. book a suite. Yes. Yeah. And split it because you can usually put more people in. Yep. So it might actually be cheaper or just a tiny bit more, which could be worth all of your comfort <laughs> right? to go just up to a moderate or a deluxe yeah. kind of hotel. Um, so just, yeah, again, I, when you know your budget, that's something that Katie I can, can work like, with you. direct mm -hmm. you in what might be your best option. Mm -hmm. yep. So now you know when you're going, you know where you want to stay. Um, the next thing is going to be just kind of getting yourselves organized a little bit because once you start booking, um, people are going to be sending money all over the place, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just like if you went to any other place, one person's going to end up booking the hotel and then you're all going to pay that person your mm -hmm. portion. So mm -hmm. this is a situation where you can use stuff like PayPal and Venmo mm -hmm. to make payments to each other yep. um disney because you're also dealing with park tickets um you're going to be using the my disney experience accounts do you want to talk about those right yeah so those are yeah do you each person has their own account or one person so the accounts up you can have um, you can have one account and you can put everybody on one account or you can each set up your own account. But the person whose name the room is under is considered the lead guest. 
So everything will go through their specific account on the My Disney Experience um, website. When you get to Disney, um, being that there's only one lead guest, there's only one credit card on there. So you want to make sure that you're kind of keeping the, – the app will keep track of who charges what, but um, you can only have one credit card on file. So you want to make sure, you know, keep that in mind. There's ways so to fix it. So have your most – responsible, responsible <laughs> reliable person be your lead guest make the reservation yeah actually yes. book the package <laughs> yes maid of honor those are your duties <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I, we should also mention if you are going if you're going to disney you don't if you're spending you know four nights at Disney, mm -hmm. you don't have to also buy four days no. worth of park tickets. No. You can book four nights and just go to a park one or two mm -hmm. days. People do that all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, that's just something that you do to customize your package. So yeah. You don't feel like every single day that you're there, you have to go to a no, park. No, you absolutely and don't. I actually recommend having a day where you do not go to a park. Yeah, I'm um, the same way. We're, we're pretty adamant about this. And also, the day that you arrive and the day that you are, leave are not, not park, park days. days. Don't do it, especially because you know maybe if you maybe if you live in like Tampa and you're just an hour away and you're driving in, that's one thing. But if right. you're flying in and you you know happen to get to your hotel by like noon, right? That means that you've probably been up since like four o'clock in the morning. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Don't kill yourself no check in have a lunch relax go shopping yes get the pool what you know get and then get to bed early so you can and actually enjoy your party yes days yeah down and the i line. completely agree with that yeah yeah because it's it, it's a little much. we used to do that my family <sighs> travels like insane people <laughs> Us too. if any of them are watching right now i'm sorry but it's the truth yeah <laughs> y'all are crazy <laughs> um so we yeah but we don't we don't actually do that anymore so we yeah we don't either lesson. yeah oh yeah and i my mom just my mom just tuned in so i think she might have just missed me saying that <laughs> um um so, yeah, so don't feel like you have to go to the park every no. single day. No, you don't. Um, so at 180 days, something amazing happened. It does. And it is. You can book your dining reservations. You can figure out where you want to go to eat and make a reservation for that restaurant. So you get to start planning your trip aside from having everything booked. And even if you're not a foodie or – you become you don't one. Think that you care <laughs> about the food, like you just think it's theme park food, whatever. It's not. It's just so much more than it that. really is. And it it is. is. It's its own experience. It, it like is. Half the time I go there now, and I just have a list of foods that I want. Yes. Like I don't even care about the rides. I'm the same way. <laughs> my last, <laughs> my last trip, I was on a macaroon hunt. So macaroons are the new big thing, and uh, there were multiple spots at every single park and I made sure to hit up every single macaroon stand in all the parks See, so and I'm like nobody talked to me until like unless we're talking about getting a dole whip like <laughs> a dole whip float actually I prefer the float but yes so yes at 180 days you can you can start picking what restaurants you want to eat at and making mm -hmm. those reservations. And some of them do fill up fast. Very so fast. You yes. kind of want to be ready to go with those uh, as soon as mm -hmm. you can. And um, you, ha you have to have your, you have to have your room booked. So you can't just say, Oh, I don't know where I want to stay yet. And I want to book my dining. Um, you have to have a reservation in order to take advantage of that 180 days. So keep that in mind too. Okay. Uh, that's good to know. And we'll talk more about like, certain dining experiences that we think would be good for a girl's trip in yeah. a minute. Um, but just know that that happens at 180 yep. days out. Yep. Um, and then the next, uh, I guess, milestone in yes. this booking is the 60 day 60 mark, day mark. Um, for fast passes. Yes. So fast passes are uh, skip the line passes. Essentially you get to go to the front of the line. So when that standby line says three and a half hours, you have a fast pass for it. 
and you do not have to wait in that three and a half hour line, which is nice. Um, they are, you only get a certain amount of day. You get unlimited, but it's based on availability. Um, but you start with three every day that you're staying. And here again is another reason that you want to stay on Disney property because staying off property, um, you don't get to book until 30 days in advance and certain fast passes do fill up very quickly. So, um, and I can like, attest to this the, because when we booked our trip yes. last year, we, well, we stayed at the Wyndham Bonnet Creek, which is, I mean, it's kind of very on nice Disney property, but it's not a Disney yeah. hotel. It's the Wyndham. Um, and so we could not it's, book yeah. our fast passes until 30 days out. And let me tell mm -hmm. you about all the rides we didn't go on <laughs> <laughs> because the fast passes were gone. So uh, I didn't get to go yeah. on any of the Avatar rides at Animal Kingdom um, because the fast passes were gone and the line, one of them was like four hours. And Are I was long. Back. Yeah. Like I'll be, yeah, I know I'll be day. back before like I'm 80, so I'll catch it at another time. But um, yeah. So yeah. this is another reason to Yeah, you definitely want to stay on property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that no, I help I you with, say, too. So when I say that, go ahead. No, go ahead. When, when you stay, when you stay, when I do your trip for you, um, and I tell you that literally all you have to do is show up at the airport on time, I do all of this. So I will book your fast passes. I figure out where, what you want to do in your trip, what you want to see, what rides or I'm sorry, what attractions you've seen that you want to take advantage of. And I plan your day out because there is a whole system behind it. And I take care of that for all for you and explain to you step by step on where you want to go. And um, so that's just something to keep in mind that it's, it's not something Disney is not an easy thing to book because um there's a lot of tricks behind it and you could miss a lot and you could see a lot depending on how you book it. And I help you make sure that you see a lot, even in a short amount of time. So Yeah. If you're a first timer, get help. <laughs> like we're used to it because we go all the time. Right. Um, and, and we're, you know, constantly knowing about all the new updates. Yes. But, um, well, Disney world has become a bit of a chess game. Yes. Uh, Disneyland is, is very different. Um, very different. And I, I, I will say I do kind of wish Walt Disney World would be a little more spontaneous. Oh, yeah. Like it used to be. But, uh, you know, it's, it, the times. this is the way that they feel like they need to help manage crowds, then, you know, they have their reasons for doing these things. So right. uh, just know that there's a little bit of nuance to it and... Uh, if you can get help, you should get help. Get help. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, so, okay. And I also wanted to talk about magic bands because that's something that's going to come up when you book a package. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that you're going to be dealing with. Yeah. So the magic bands are, they're basically your key to the kingdom. Um, they are your room key to get into, in and out of your room. Well, in your room. Um, they have the lead guests credit card on them. So keep that in mind. Um, so you can charge everything back to your room, whether it be food or souvenirs. Um, and they're your tickets into the park. Um, so you get, you basically just wear it. It's like an Apple watch. Uh, you wear it on your wrist and it has everything. And then it also has your memory maker on there, which is, um, a thing Disney has for unlimited downloads. And anytime you get your pictures taken, you would put, you would just give the cast member your magic band and they scan your pictures to your magic band. So it's literally the key to the kingdom is all what it is. It's all in one. All and in it's one. waterproof. Waterproof, it's, sweatproof, yeah, a, everything. Yeah. It's like a little band you wear on your wrist. Yep. And you just wear it everywhere yep. and it does everything. And but they it's have actually kind of convenient very. when you are out in the park. Yes. Even though it's all, all attached to one person's you know, credit card, um, it keeps track of who's charging. It, like the, each band kind of has its own ID. Is that right? Yeah. So each band has its own ID. You set it up. When, when, we, set up your, um, when we set up your trip, we get your My Disney Experience set up. 
and um, each person has their own name. You get to pick your own color magic band. And then when you're actually in the park and you're charging things to the park, it will say everything specific, like um, Don Brown spent $17.50 at Aloha Isle in Magic Kingdom on March 25th at 1230. So it narrows everything down. So you have a way of knowing Oh, well, Dawn's the one that spent the $500 on the gigantic Mickey. Um, <laughs> More like a Dooney and Bert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So. so then you can go and pay your individual tab so that the person yes. whose account it's attached to, you know, you're not trying to pay, they're not trying to pay everything on there and then you pay them Everyone. back. You can actually pay right. it directly. Yeah, so if you know at the end of each day, you could do it every day. You could do it a couple times during your visit. As long as you do it before uh, midnight on your last day, you can actually go down to the lobby and pay your portion on your room towards that card. Um, so, so that actually is convenient, right? Because you don't mm -hmm. have to constantly be fiddling, getting in and out of your purse in right. the park trying yeah. to find credit cards and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when you guys are coming back from the park or, or shopping or whatever, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you can just, just stop all it. hit the front desk, pay your yep. daily portion, whatever you spent yep. that day. And, uh, you know, you're ready to go for the next day. Yeah. When I go to the parks, all I ever bring are my license and my health insurance card are the only two things I ever bring into the park with me. So, um, you know, it saves room on what you got to put in your fanny pack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, less stuff is better. And then you're right. not losing credit cards and leaving them right. places and things like that. Right, right. Um, and she, you also mentioned the memory maker. So yes. this is like a must. It's a, it's a photo package, really, is mm -hmm. what it is. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like $170. Yes. Um, yep. And so there's what are called photo pass photographers all over all the parks everywhere. Um, so if you go to the magic kingdom and you're walking down main street towards Cinderella castle, you might see four or five mm -hmm. photo pass photographers. What they'll do is, you know, you'll get in line to get your picture. They'll scan your car, uh, your card. Well, but you won't have a card. You'll have your magic band. So they'll scan yep. the magic band. They'll take a, a couple of photos and off you go. And then you can log in and see your photos. Everything, yeah. So, um, And then you get and, unlimited and downloads with the Magic Yeah. Brain. So, so every person in your party can download all the photos that they want. Yep. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, the PhotoPass photographers are where they are. Uh, yeah, they, they can't, can't really move. move. <laughs> no, they can't at all. Uh, so if you want more like custom photos, that's when you need to call me. I will yes. do Disney sessions. Um, and I know all the best spots and mm -hmm. I can go there. <laughs> and I know all the best times too. Um, exactly. So if you want a custom photography package mm -hmm. for your, you know, ladies trip. Right. I can I can definitely create a special package for you. Mm -hmm. They'll get you all different photos in all different locations that you want. Mm -hmm. um, so and if you, ask, if you ask nicely, she'll even be your private tour guide for the day. <laughs> this is true. Yeah, like <laughs> you get the whole thing. You get the whole package. Um, so now we're going to talk about some of the fun stuff. Like yes. once you've kind of decided where you're going, when you're going, where you're going to stay. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much to do there. Oh my gosh. Yeah. If you're a first timer, you're not going to um, see it all. Or if anyone in your, you you can't like, no. I worked there for a little over two years and I'm embarrassed to say I've never eaten in Cinderella's castle. <laughs> this surprises people when they hear it, but there's so many things there is. that even I haven't done mm -hmm. and I've done all the things. Yeah. So you cannot see it all. So you just have to kind of pick the things that are going to give you the most joy to and experience do that. and mm -hmm. then be happy with it. Yep. Um, so we're going to talk about some of our top picks yes. uh, that we think would be great for a girl's trip or a bachelorette party mm -hmm. trip. Um, so, as far as parks go in general, I'm super princessy and characters and like 
fun photo spots and like just all that. Um, I'm paint glitter, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so my first choice, if I was planning a trip and I could only go to one or two parks, my first choice would be Magic Kingdom always. Mm -hmm. uh, and then second would be Epcot. Uh, yes. Epcot has a lot of like unique character Very. Uh, experiences. You'll find mm -hmm. characters there that you that you won't really see other places like um, in the World Showcase, which is like eleven different countries. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll see Mulan. Mulan. You'll see yep. Aladdin and Jasmine. Mm -hmm. Although you can also see them at Magic Kingdom. Uh, Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Alice. Um, Alice. Mm -hmm. uh, Belle. And the beast, right? Um, the, There's the Donald Duck from the Three Caballeros. You can only see him at Epcot. At Epcot yep. Uh, so if you're like so. into like some of the more offbeat or right. not not so Cinderella characters, Epcot mm -hmm. is going to be a place you should check out. Yes, <laughs> yes, and it's very adult. So if you're going, you're doing your bachelorette party. That's where. You know, you're going to be able to. So that is on my list. Epcot and Ep Epcot's on my top list of where to go, especially for a bachelorette party, because you can go around the different countries. You can go get a margarita and then go into Norway and get a beer and, a, and then go to Germany and get a pretzel. So um, this is where you can do if you've heard. Drinking around, around the world. The world. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is a, a popular this is going to be popular for a bachelorette mm -hmm. party. So, yep. or just a girl's trip. Like I would do this with my mom. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you do do that Beer. word of warning, do not start in Mexico. So if you're walking towards the world showcase, you can go, go the right left or you can go right. Don't start in Mexico. Everyone makes no. a mistake. Go to the right and start in Canada. Yes. And be be responsible because Disney will remove you from the park if you're like yes. obliterated. If you're yeah. falling down drunk, it's not cute, and they will remove you from the park from just yeah. for disorderly conduct. Um, so you can drink around the world, but be responsible. You know, right. share your drinks. Maybe yeah. only buy. You know, if you really want to try. I recommend the ice cream martini in France and you want it all to yourself, that's fine. But then like, you know, share the beer that you get when you go <laughs> to Germany. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if, even though at this point you are adulting, it is still Walt Disney world. You are, there are still families and you know, they don't, three-year-olds don't need to see that. So yeah, mm -mm. keep that in mind. It's fun Always. though. It's it's definitely worth it. But it is really fun, and it's it's actually really cool to try the different drinks from all the different countries. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like mm. I I tried sake. I'm not a fan. Oh, I love Don't sake. love it. <laughs> uh, oh, but I I I don't think I've ever really left there without getting a bottle of wine from Italy. Like that just always happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. See, and whenever I go, I always get a pretzel and a Schofahofer in Germany. So Schofahofer is very difficult to say, but it is really good. It's a grapefruit beer and you can get it in the States. You can get it when you're back home, but there's something about that draft in Germany of drinking a Schofahofer there. So, yep. Yeah. So that's our top picks. Well, you, but Epcot is kind of your top pick. And then you it is. pick the studios, right? I do. Yeah. Especially with an adult, um, you know, nothing's wrong with Magic Kingdom. Nothing's wrong with Animal Kingdom. They're <laughs> great parks and I do like them. Um, but especially if you're going for, if you're adulting, those are your two parks that you're going to be able to adult a lot. There's a lot of thrill attractions, um, there's alcohol. You can't get that in Magic Kingdom. So if you nope. are that type of bachelorette party and that's what you want to do is have a, constantly have a drink in your hand, you can't get that at Magic Kingdom. So it all kind of depends on what you're looking for. But I like the adult feel of the parks that you get at Epcot and Hollywood Studios. So, yeah. Um, and we should mention at the time of this recording, 
we do now know the opening date of Star yes. Wars Galaxy's Edge. Yes, we do. And when it opens, I I can pretty much promise you the part that they will the, be at the capacity. Hollywood Studios will at, be at capacity for With the it, foreseeable future. With, by like the first half hour of the park opening. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah, if you are planning to use that as one of the parks that you want to go to, <sighs> know that for a period of time, the crowds will be insane. Very and busy. It may be difficult to get um, fast passes. You can't like get fast passes fairly, for... Well, but for the other For Star rides, Wars. Oh, yeah. For everything else. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You can't get them for the that. The park's going to be so full. Yeah. Uh, Again, like we said, that's why you need a travel planner because <laughs> all these little things. Yeah. Um, so, okay, let's talk about top dining picks because um, mm -hmm. this is uh, like we there's said, before, so dining many is a whole thing, and there's, I mean, I don't even know how many sit down restaurants. Oh it's, my gosh, there's it, too many to count. It's so many, and um, so. For a girls' trip, yes. I love the San Angel Inn restaurant mm -hmm. inside the Mexico Pavilion at Epcot. I think the ambiance there is super cool. Mm -hmm. It looks like you're outside at night in Mexico. It, I don't know. It, it's awesome. It the is. Food it's is really so cool. good. Right. They have amazing margaritas. Yeah. Um, if you were there in the summer, it's such a great way to get out of the sun and just get mm -hmm. some air conditioning on you. Um, yeah. I, I just, I love it. I think it's an awesome lunch or dinner spot for a bachelorette party. Fun right. photo ops. Uh, you can watch the Mexico boat ride go by. It's yep. just, I just love the ambiance of it. And like you're um, getting real, I mean, in each country, especially just really quick. So you're getting real cuisine from that country. Especially, well, when you're yeah. in Epcot, at least. So the, the like, margaritas that you're getting, you're not going to put Jose Cuervo in your margarita. You're getting real, really good Mexican tequila in that, in that margarita. So it's, it's not like going to Six Flags and getting a nacho yeah. there where it's, you know, bagged cheese. I mean, this, you're getting real... Five, four, five star quality foods at all these restaurants. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Um, I do also love the French restaurant. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you have a night where you want to get like dressed up, I think that would be a really good place to go. But that's not in my top pick <laughs> for a bachelorette party. Like it's in my top five. But um, I also for bachelorette party love the fifties primetime cafe at Me Disney Hollywood Studios. Yes. It's so fun. Yes. Like it's it looks like a fifties kitchen. Mm -hmm. Like I mean you have like the chrome sided tables mm -hmm. and the old black and white TVs and they're playing like reruns of yeah. I Love Lucy and the Dick Van Dyke show. I mean it's just yeah. awesome. I love it so much. And it's it's American food. I mean it's burgers and fries and things like that. Yeah. Um, Comfort food. But the the waiters are I mean, when they call your party, they say mom's calling the mom's calling the brown party. I mean, it, they're kind of mean. I mean, they're like your mom. <laughs> not that my mom is mean. I, I don't know if she's still watching. My mom is not mean. <laughs> but, you know, like, they're just like your mom. They're right. getting you ready for your dinner. Exactly. And they're being in a loving mom kind of way. And it's super fun. Right. Right. And if you want fun photos this is one of the restaurants where that's going to happen yeah yeah and if you go there and you like peanut butter and jelly at all and that just like warms your heart get the peanut butter and jelly oh, shake milkshake top notch <laughs> yes it's delicious everything is there and yeah. i also love beef like and cream oh, which is at oh, the disney's beach club resort um, super yummy again it's kind of 50s themed I don't know I, I guess I maybe I was born in the wrong decade though <laughs> um, and again it's American food but yeah it's really cool it's like a soda shop kind of feel mm -hmm. very pink <laughs> very and yellow and aqua 
uh, which is kind of my colors, I guess. But um, the ice cream there, so like good. if you want dessert stuff, it's so good. Love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. I am... Oh, I had one more. Yeah. Sorry. I know. I was waiting for you to say that last one. <laughs> yeah, I know you were. <laughs> I can't go to Disney and not eat character meals. Like I have to do a character meal every time because it's, I mean, why not? Like the characters are coming to you. So I, for a girls trip, 1900 park fair, I went with my mom. Uh, it was quite some time ago, but I think it was one of my favorite character meals and they do breakfast and dinner. So 1900 park fair is at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort, which is like Mm -hmm. the Blue Diamond Resort at Disney. Um, Yeah. And the breakfast, the character breakfast, uh, if I remember correctly, they're both buffets, the breakfast and the dinner. Yes. The breakfast, breakfast you'll get to meet Mary Poppins, Mm -hmm. the Mad Hatter, Mm -hmm. Alice, Winnie the Pooh, and Tigger. Yes. Um. And then for the dinner, and I've done both. I've done the breakfast and the dinner because that's who I am. <laughs> uh, the dinner is Cinderella, Prince Charming, and the Evil Stepsisters. And I cannot tell you how fun both of these character meals are. Like, they are. The Mad Hatter is crazy. Like, just so fun. And then the stepsisters for the dinner, they're just unruly. <laughs> So this would be the ultimate, like, I think, girls' breakfast or girls' dinner um, because you're just going to get the best – you're going to get the best group photos with characters. The food is really good. Yeah. Uh, it is kind of – it's an ex- pr- expensive, kind of pricey experience. Like, I think the breakfast is, like, $60 a person or something, and the dinner is probably, like, 75 But But you're on vacation. Yeah, totally worth it. You know, if you're if you're only gonna splurge on one fancy meal, right. I I think this is this is the one I would pick. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> the characters are definitely the way to go. So I I actually you go a different route though. I do go a little bit of a different route, and I, I kind of go based on you know every every trip is going to be different. So you ha- you know when you tell me what type of trip that you want. You know, we'll figure all this out. But for me, one a couple things that I really like are the Spirit of Aloha um, Luau at Disney's Polynesian. It is very adult. It's like being in Hawaii and you're seeing a luau in front of you. And I think it's really cool. Um, and then also at the Polynesian, can you tell what my favorite hotel is? Um, <laughs> is uh, it's called Kona Cafe. So they have an amazing breakfast there. They also do a very good dinner. Um, it's all Polynesian feels. So you're getting, you know, pineapples and, and, uh, pulled pork, things like that. Yeah. 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 Um, they have 100% pure Kona coffee, which if you've never had Kona coffee before, I recommend it. It is not a cheap type of coffee bean to get, but it is amazing. Um, so I like that for breakfast and dinner. It's a very adult feel, um, And then if you want a little bit of a fun idea to kind of go with the fifties prime time cafe, I like the hoop to do review. It's funny. (laughs) It's, you know, they throw some adult type jokes out there that even though there's going to be little kids in the audience, they might not pick up on what's getting thrown down. So, um, and the hoop to do review is at, um, Fort Wilderness, Fort Wilderness campgrounds. Yes. Uh, Disney has, how many resorts is it now? Like 23 or Yeah. Yeah, it's up there. It depends on how you figure. Like, there's Disney's Boardwalk, but then there's also Disney Boardwalk Villas. So there's quite a few. So as you're hearing us throw out all of these resort names, just know, like, (laughs) resort. There's a lot of, there's a lot outside of the parks. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like, you don't want to overlook what's going on at the resorts because there's a lot of awesome stuff going There's on a lot. Outside of the park. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you like the show. Yeah. For a girl. I do. I do like the shows. Trip. Yeah. I yes. did love the Aloha dinner show. 
it's awesome. I mean, I like the to do review too. I mean, they're they're super fun. Right. Um, there's also special dining experiences that you can have. We mm -hmm. won't get into too much of them, but you can you can do things like get um, special cruises out mm -hmm. to, on the lakes to see fireworks with mm -hmm. dessert included and all kinds of. Yep. Things like that. And a lot of them are actually really affordable. They really are. If you can fill out the reservation, you yes. know, if they allow eight people and you have all eight people or, you know, 12 people or however many people, they're all, they're all kind of different. Um, but obviously the more people, because it's like a per party thing rather yes. than a per person thing. Yeah. Um, and that's something that Katie can help you decide if you want and get set up for you. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't overlook it. Um, some of the fireworks viewing things are very good. awesome. Yeah. And, you know, it's a nice way to kind of be away from the crowd, but yeah. still together. Yeah. Um, so, okay, real quick, we're going to get into some other, you know, things that you can experience on all of the Walt Disney World properties. So shopping is a lot of shopping. Thing. Uh, there is a dedicated shopping area called Disney Springs. Yes. Um, it used to be called downtown, downtown Disney. Disney. So if you hear people say that um, online, if That's you're doing any searches, the same it used thing. to be called downtown Disney, yep. but it's, it's the same thing. Um, so Disney Springs is dedicated to shopping. Mm -hmm. There's, and there's a couple of different sections to it. Yeah. I mean, there you can walk from one section to the next. It's not like they're separated by anything. Yeah, but you don't need to do transportation like, there. Yeah, there's like uh, a sec, you know, a section that's mostly like Disney, like right. it has the big World of Disney store, um, mm -hmm. which is going to be all Disney merchandise. There's like home Disney home decor, Disney kids. Like yep. toy stores, there's yep. a Lego store. Yep. And then there's a more kind of like, would you call it? Kind of like, like a outside out, mall. Like almost? yeah, like an outlet like a mall. Town center. Yes. Yeah. It's like an outlet yeah. mall, but not outlet mall pricing. Um, no. But all this and there's some. I mean, there's like a Vera Bradley and uh, Sanuk and. Uh, Dooney and Bork. Pan uh, Pandora. Pandora. Miso. Yeah. Coca-Cola store. Like they're like Isn't really there, like, named. A coach store or there is a coach now? store. Yep, yeah. there's a coach store. And so all of these stores actually have Disney specific, one specific thing that was made for that store only to be sold on Disney property. So when you go into like the Vera Bradley store, you'll see a Vera Bradley Disney bag that you can't find online. You can't get anywhere other than at Disney Springs. So um, it's kind of unique. We spend a lot of time down there. I mean, yes, we pretty much go to Disney Springs every night. Yeah, it's something to do to wind down, more walking. And there's lots so of food. It, it, there's bars. Yeah. There's It's a really cool place to there's go hang out. There's a movie theater. There is a bowling a lane. bowling alley. <laughs> yep. I mean, pretty much anything, uh, House of Blues is down there. So it sometimes is. you can even catch a concert. Yes. There's a Cuban uh, restaurant that we actually have to go to every time we go. So Dan Congo. or my, yes, my husband orders yep. his Cuban sandwich and I get a Cubano coffee and at nine o'clock at night. And then I'm like <laughs> the rest of the day because I had major caffeine, but <laughs> <laughs> regret it um, every time, but it's so good. <laughs> so you'll spend a lot of time there a shopping. lot like yeah people will direct you there to go shopping mm -hmm. but katie and i are such nerds <laughs> <laughs> we like shopping at the hotels um, yes i i think i buy a souvenir from a hotel almost every time I'm me there. too and so do probably i probably 90 percent of the time at the hotel i'm not staying at <laughs> yep me too <laughs> uh, so each hotel is going to have their own gift shops. Yep. Um, and they're going to have stuff that you can't find in the parks. No. Or, or even Disney at Springs. Or Disney. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or D uh, Disney Springs. <laughs> that, see, I keep using see? The terminology. Um, so I love the 
hotels around Crescent Lake, which mm -hmm. um, you'll, you'll, people will direct you to Disney's Boardwalk. So mm -hmm. there's the Boardwalk Resort, the Swan and Dolphin Resort, and yep. the Yacht and Beach Club Resort. Yep. And they just all go around this lake. You can just walk around in a big circle. Mm -hmm. um, and they have, between the five hotels, awesome gift shops. Like Yes. So... You know, if you need, like, beachy decor for your home, these are the places you're going to want to go. Um, and, like, the boardwalk usually has some of the more, like, vintage looking Mickey and Minnie mm -hmm. things uh, just because of the theming of it. So, yeah, um, you know, just, like, if you go to Disney's Polynesian Resort, uh, you're going to see a lot of Lilo and Stitch merchandise. So if you have a Lilo and Stitch junkie in your family like mm -hmm. this lady... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's probably a good place you want to go shopping. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you can also get, um, so one thing I like doing now, we did it a couple years, like two years ago, and I think every Disney hotel does this, but I'll do it from a Disney specific hotel I want to do it. You can mail a coconut home, which is oh. awesome. <laughs> so you do it to an unexpecting friend that it's like sending a postcard. And uh, yep. they all look the same. Like it says greetings from Walt Disney World. But like a week later, they call you and they're like, there was a real coconut in their mailbox. So it's, <laughs> it's a postcard. Everyone throws postcards out where, you know, no, no lie, you're going to throw it out. But like I, ha I mailed one to myself and it sits um, underneath our TV and it's just something that sits there. So, you know, it's. Something that you can only get at the Disney hotels. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, shopping is... There's a lot. You can pretty much do it anywhere. Yeah. Yep. Um, there are spas. So if you are wanting mm -hmm. to have, like, a relaxing day, uh, you can do... There's spas. Um, there's a, a few hotels. There's one at, yeah, there's one at um, the Grand Floridian... Yeah, uh, the Dolphin Resort and the Yacht yep. Club Resort. Yeah, um, and Coronado get, Springs also. Yeah, and Coronado Springs. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get massages. You can get facials. You can get mani pedis. Yeah. Um, they're pretty reasonably priced. Uh, they I, actually are. I did a mani pedi at the uh, spa. It's called the Ship Shape Salon at the Yacht Club Resort, and I loved it. It was awesome, and worth it so um and if you are princessy like me and you want to <laughs> um they have this thing for little kids called the bibbidi bobbidi boutique yes. and all of the moms and you know older ladies were like oh what about us uh, i want to be a princess one. yeah <laughs> And now you can get made up like your favorite princess. You can, mm -hmm. you can, you can do everything like hair, makeup, and nails, or you can just, you know, if you want to be kind of subtle about it, you can get princess inspired like nails, painting, mm -hmm. decor stuff. So depending on how far you want to go with <laughs> it, that could be a fun for a group. Yes. Actually, I think that would be really fun if you were going during Halloween and oh my gosh, going yeah. to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Yes. Everybody pick out a costume for their favorite princess, go get their hair and makeup done. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be a pretty fun way to spend the day. Um, yeah, and it's so not, you have to that make there, that that's out there. Yeah, you have to make reservations too. You can't just walk into uh, Grand Floridian yeah. and expect that you're the only ones knowing about this. So you got to make reservations. Yeah, you would have to plan that out in advance. Um, right. There are other things that you can do, which I'm just going to mention briefly. Um, yeah. It, I mean, there's almost something to do at every single Disney resort. Everywhere. There's bike rentals. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, like, individual bikes or the Surrey bikes that hold, like, four, six, eight people. Those are fun. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you're going to do those, I would recommend doing them at the Boardwalk Hotel. Oh, yeah. Boardwalk Resort. Yeah. Um, but there are other locations like Disney's Port Orleans resorts have them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Disney Saratoga Springs, I think has them. Yes. Um, yes. They do. So that's a thing. If you're looking for a non park activity, there's mm -hmm. also carriage rides, which would be fun with your ladies one evening. Yep. Uh, 
there's boat rentals, um, mm -hmm. and the boat rentals are so freaking fun. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have like, you know, it, if you're like wanting to spend time by the water, but you don't necessarily want to be in the pool, the boat rentals, and they're like really affordable and you can rent them like, yeah, at, they're not expensive. You can rent them at more hotels than, than you can't rent them at. So, um, yeah, yeah. Every hotel, yeah, has any some hotel kind of that water. has a marina. Uh, we usually go to mm -hmm. Disney's Contemporary Resort because I think they have like mm -hmm. the best stacked marina. Um, but you can yes, get them at. I agree with that. Um, Fort Wilderness. You can get them at the Grand Floridian. You can get them at the Polynesian. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have breakfast at Kona Cafe and then you want to go rent boats, you can do it all at the same. Right resort. there. Yep. Um, there's mini golf. I bet you guys didn't know that. There's two mini golf courses two. at Walt Disney World. <laughs> they're so much fun. <laughs> and they're really cool. Um, private cruises, again, mm -hmm. that's something that if you're interested in it, they're mm -hmm. more affordable than you think. Yes. And Katie can help you get that set up. Yep. Um, they have them during the day. They have them during the fireworks. Yep. Um, like I have written here, for fireworks there's one that's a pontoon for up to eight and it's at, it starts at three hundred dollars mm -hmm. so three hundred dollars split eight ways like that's not crazy for a private fireworks cruise right but they um, fill up fast so you have to make you know it's one of those you got to know you got to basically know what you want to do and then start planning it because yeah yeah um some like fun just for yourselves fun you can do mm -hmm. our hidden mickey hunts there's hidden mickeys like everywhere everywhere like, there's whole books that you can buy at <laughs> barnes and noble about where hidden mickeys are there's um, more hidden so... mickeys at all of the parks in walt disney world than there are cast members at all the disney all of disney like they're just everywhere. there you go everywhere so if you wanted to have i don't know a friendly wager among friends about who can find the most of them Obviously, picks or it didn't happen, right? Like, you have right. to have proof. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this would be a fun thing. Yep. Um, and pin trading is still a huge oh my gosh. thing there. And everyone gets so, into it. It's like I get oh, into yeah. pin trading. I love pin yeah. trading. So, yeah. yeah. Every fun. time I go there, I'm like, pin trading, like, are we still doing this? And then I'm like, <laughs> in the store, buying them. So, so you could trade yeah. them? Yeah. 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 <laughs> how about the fact how about the fact that our last trip I found this really nice pin? I'm like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing pin. And I didn't have any pins to trade. Like James had some, but I didn't want to take the poor kids' pins because what kind of mom would I be? <laughs> so I went and bought the cheapest pin so I could trade for this pin. And I spent fourteen dollars on a pin. Come to find out the pin I traded is like just some average pin that was, I'm like, Boo. well, now I feel like a fool. <laughs> um, but I got a cool pin. <laughs> so that's something yeah. you can do. So we're kind of just running down what's available, and then you'll definitely mm -hmm. want to plan this out with your plan. Oh, yeah. But also tours. There's all kinds of tours, like so many tours available um mm -hmm. well, i'll just mention a couple of them um there's caring for giants which is a one-hour tour yes. at animal kingdom animal where kingdom. you mm -hmm. uh view the elephants like you get to see where they take care of the elephants yep. um yep there's a behind the scenes tour which actually takes you behind the scenes of the land ride at epcot epcot mm -hmm. uh and that's an hour tour. And mm -hmm. these are like $25, $30 a person. Yeah, they're not expensive. Um, there's, if you are very curious and you've heard all the stories about the Utilidors that basically the living, working city that exists mm -hmm. under the Magic Kingdom, there's a tour for you. <laughs> right. Uh, it's a five hour tour. It's not a short thing. And you do have to have park admission to do it. You do. Um, but it's a hundred bucks a person. You get lunch mm -hmm. and you get to go in the city under Magic Kingdom. Mm -hmm. It's pretty freaking cool. There's a restaurant down there. 
there's, there's a, a hair union down there. There's a lot. There's yeah. A hair salon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's a full on city under there. It really um, is. It's a really cool experience. Um, there, if you, if you are friends with some divers, like if you guys are all, you know, dive queens, uh, mm-hmm. you can actually go diving in the fish tank at Epcot uh, at the yes. Seas with Nemo and Friends. Yes. I've done it three times. The condition, the diving conditions are the most perfect that you will ever experience. <laughs> you don't have to deal with currents. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, you do have to be certified. Yeah. Uh, and they will want to see your ID, like your diving certification. So if you're not all diver certified, but you still want to go in the tank at Epcot, they do have a snorkeling experience. Yes. Um, so that's just a taste of the tours. Of everything you and can I do. And I know the one that Katie thinks <laughs> is the best. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and could be worth your investment is the Disney VIP tour. Yes. Yeah, so it um, is – okay, so the Disney VIP tour is going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, it runs between 400 to $600 an hour, um, and you have to do at least seven hours, uh, and that is for everybody. So you, it fits up to 10 people. If you have less than 10, that's okay. If you have more than 10, you have to pick who doesn't go. Um, so pick your favorites. Oh, no. Um, or you just book a second trip. You can do more than one together, but basically what it is, um, you get skip the lines, like even more than fast pass. So there's the standby lines, there's fast pass lines. Then there's the VIP people who you skip everybody. You go right onto that ride. And if you want to go onto, um, splash mountain seven times in a row, guess what? You just tell your, your guide, I want to do splash mountain seven times in a row and you get to do that. So um, it is, and they show you, they, they tell you about things, they take you on stuff. So it is, if you're on a time schedule and you don't have a lot of time, you can do a VIP tour and get to see a lot in a certain amount and, you know, seven hours. So, um, totally worth it. If, when you, uh, see, you know, that Kim Kardashian was at Disneyland last weekend and you see that person wearing a red plaid vest walking around with them. That's because she does the VIP tour because she can't wait in line with us normal people. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much what the VIP tours are. Totally and worth what it. Was the, what was the price again? You said it depends on the, the time. Range. It's between four hundred to six hundred dollars an hour. An hour. So four hundred dollars. If you got it for four hundred, yes. you'd have to do a minimum of seven minimum hours. of seven hours. Yep. So, so that's twenty eight hundred dollars divided by ten people. But, Divided by ten people, is I mean, who am I to say? <laughs> right. <laughs> Maybe if somebody's gifting you your bachelor, yes, party, yes, to throw that in one day could be worth it. <laughs> exactly. It's. I mean, it's it's totally worth it because you are seeing a lot. You're getting if you want to park hop and you want to go to a different park, so you want to do part of Magic Kingdom and then go to Animal Kingdom. Um, they also have private transportation, so you don't have to sit and wait for the Disney oh, buses. So, so it's not just one park. You no, can, it's anywhere. You can buy that package and then tell yeah. them all the places you want to go. Yeah, you okay. uh, set everything up and do what you want to do for the day. So, yeah, if you want more okay. than seven hours, you can do a, you can do a twelve-hour VIP a tour. Yeah, yeah, anything. So okay. totally worth it. So something to keep in mind, you know, like yes, there's all different kinds of people going and mm-hmm. we just wanted to tell you that that's available if yes. you find value in that mm-hmm. um let's see okay so that's pretty much it i'm just gonna yeah. say a few other um quick notes mm-hmm. uh for planning a bachelorette party post a schedule in your rooms mm-hmm. room or rooms uh mm-hmm. i know it can be when you're traveling with a larger group or just people that all kind of have their own minds, <laughs> yeah, people can kind of end up scattered. So, you know, just shoot everybody a PDF or something, a text, something that has the schedule on it, and then just print one off and hang it up in your room somewhere. That way everybody knows where everybody's yep. going to be at whatever time. Um, and then... Uh, of course, safety first. 
uh, have everybody's emergency contact information. Um, mm -hmm. And I recommend this for any travel. Like, if you're traveling as a group or oh, alone, yeah. like, you need to make sure that the pertinent people have contact information for your partner, for your parents, siblings, whomever is your emergency contact, mm -hmm. uh, just in case, because you just, you know, plan for the, <laughs> hope Unexpected. for the best, plan for the worst kind of thing, yeah. Right. Um, and when you get in your room... Turn on Stacy. <laughs> She's actually Anything. super helpful. She is. Anything that Dawn or I forget to tell you about, Stacy will remind you. Um, yeah. So she's just, uh, it's just this channel that runs on a loop, like a 12 minute loop, um, that she tells you everything about what's going on at all the parks. So, ever watch when I go to Disney? Is Stacy. <laughs> Yeah, Stacey's it kind awesome. of keeps you but, yeah. in tune with what's going on Occupy. at that time. Um, yeah. Yep. There are some other places where you can do research. Uh, if you want to look some stuff up before you get into the planning stages with Katie, uh, we both are pretty obsessed yep. with the Disney food blog. Um, she does talk yes. about more stuff than just food at Disney. But if you are do. <laughs> curious, uh, if you had your curiosity sparked by our discussion of, like, how we could just go there and eat the whole time, <laughs> that's a good place to start. Go check out this food idea, blog. Yeah. yeah, of where you might yeah. want to eat or little snacks and things that you might want to try. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, that, oh, the, sorry, yeah, the ahead. Disney food blog, the Disney food blog, that is where I found out about the ice cream martinis that I then told Dawn about, who is now hooked on the ice cream martinis. Yes. So that's, yes. you know, I, I, uh, yeah, it's an awesome I got website. two. <laughs> They're so trip. good. <laughs> and you can get macaroons there too. They have yeah. macaroons there too. So, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, allears.net is the next one. Um, yeah. That's, that's, uh, they have everything. It's a little bit outdated at times. Um, keep in mind, these are not like Disney. They're, they're not, not Disney affiliated. Disney. Yeah. No, no. These are just no, individual people like us blogging and writing about things right. that they know about. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you are considering Disneyland as an option, um, mm hmm it, we might do. We might have to because I love Disneyland. I, people told me I would I know. like it after working at Disney World and growing up on Disney World, and I was like, "I think you're wrong." And then they totally were. So yeah. Anyway, we have love for Disneyland. We'll do one on Disneyland. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I love um, the fairy tale. This fairy tale life. It's like this fairy tale life dot com. Mm -hmm. She is. Fairy Tale Mindy on Instagram. She is a Disney blogger, uh, but she lives in California and she goes to Disneyland. You know, she's an annual pass holder and all of that. So if you want some cool stuff about like what's going on at Disneyland, she's a good one to follow. But um, yeah, yeah, we to we totally love Disneyland over here. We have love we have love for it and Disneyland yes. Paris. Like if you want to <laughs> go to Disneyland Paris, like if you can swing that for your bachelorette party. Do Let it. me know, and maybe we'll do a show on that. <laughs> um, um, so that's all I have. Yeah. Uh, definitely look into it. Um, I think a bachelorette party at Walt Disney World is just as affordable for the same amount of days as if you went to Nashville or New York City, which is so oh, expensive. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, even Vegas. Uh, oh my gosh, so yeah. if you are considering a trip and mm -hmm. you are thinking about Florida, Orlando specifically, and you just think it's more than what you might spend elsewhere, mm -hmm. I would challenge you on that. Uh, oh, and yeah. also say that you're going to have a pretty unique experience because you can really make it any kind of experience you want. It can be yes. relaxing. It can be go, go, go. It can be princessy pink glitter. It can be 
super adult like thrill Every- rides and mm-hmm. I mean it can be all about fooding it can be it can literally be whatever you want you can do it there yeah you should go to Disney <laughs> I agree I agree go to Disney yeah okay um well I'm so glad that we were able to figure out our tech challenges Yay. Um, I <laughs> am going to download this video and up cap- upload it as a webcast on my blog with a transcript. Um, I will make some show notes with a link to Katie's um, Facebook page. Her website is still under construction. Um, Yes. But I will link to her and you can find her at Pictures and Postcards Travel. Um, And Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Cool. And thanks, thanks guys. For hanging See out ya. with me, Katie. <laughs> All right, yeah, bye. no problem. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> bye.